Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be looking at some in-game tactics. This specifically is from the Saavedra position, very famous position in chess. And at the end of this video, I don't necessarily want you to memorize all the moves. I more want you to understand the concepts that you should be thinking about as you approach the end game in this position right here it's white's move and if you've never seen this before the first thing you may look at is that white currently has pawn and a king uh, so currently behind as far as material but two squares away from promoting the pawn here to c8 uh, black is up material currently with the rook here uh, but does have his work cut out for him as he tries to stop this pawn pushing forward here to c8 now uh, spoiler alert, white can actually win if played correctly, but there's a lot that goes into playing correctly. When you do have a pass pawn here, the first thing you need to always be looking to do is can you push that pawn? In this case, the first move from white does need to be c7, and now things get a little trickier for black. Black really wants to stop the pawn from coming here to c8, but we can clearly see that it cannot come here to d8, because it could just be captured here by the pawn, and it can't come here to c5, because then it would just be captured by the king. So black's other alternative is just to start checking the king right away. And so the first move might be rook to d6. Now a lot of players in this position, while we already said that white wins this game if played correctly, a lot of players would look at this and say, I need to attack the rook right away. And what you really need to be thinking about in end games is what opportunities do you have long term and how can I mitigate all the risks that my opponent is threatening against me? Because if you play king to c5, this is not the best move and white is going to end up either drawing the game or potentially losing if white does not play correctly from here because after king to c5, black has the move rook to d2. And you can probably already see with the skewer coming, if the pawn now pushes forward here to c8, well then white completely loses because rook to c2, and after the king moves, then the rook's going to capture right here on c8. If white does not push forward, maybe uh, they play something else. Uh, maybe instead they play uh, king to uh, b5. Okay, well now just rook to b2 here they can chase the the king around the board if the king ever comes down to this fourth rank here then the rook can just come to c2 and white's going to lose again there's no protection on this pawn here on c7 and even if the king were to uh, let's say come back to c6 and rook to c2 uh, king up here to b7 and it chases it here where now it's defended Anytime the king moves, then the rook can just come to d2 and chase it around the board. There's no way that white's ever going to be able to push that pawn any higher up the board. So, uh, we see that d6 and c5 here is not going to be the best option. The best option for white is first going to be to play king to b5. Now let's take a look at why this is important. Still blocking off the critical squares. Can't come to C6 or D8. Those are the main squares that black can immediately go to to threaten the white pawn pushing here to C8. And now the rook cannot come down to D2 with the threat of C2 because now white can just push forward here with C8 promoting to a queen, and white should easily win a queen versus a rook in game. So instead, black is really forced to play rook to d5, continuing to check, because if the king moves uh, here from a1, similar to as before after the pawn pushes here to c7, if black does not continue to put pressure on this white king, King here to a2, to b2, to b1. Um, all of these are just going to result in the pawn pushing forward here to c8 and getting that queen. White is going to win the game. So uh, after c7, rook to d6 check, king to b5. So it's not on the same file as the pawn. Very important. Rook to d5. White has to continue the same theme. Cannot come to c4 because... 
The rook can now come down to d1. And same as before, the next move is going to be rook to c1, skewering this king and pawn potentially up here on c8 if it pushes forward and promotes here. So that's not going to work for white. Needs to keep it off the same file here so white can play king to b4. Now, black has to continue the same theme as before and play rook to d4. While this king is not on the same file as the pawn, it's doing a good job of protecting this file from the rook overcoming to the c-file to attack this pawn here on c7. So after this check right here, continue down with king to b3. And after rook to d3, Three, now the first time only can white play the move king to c2. And why is that? You can probably see that black would really like to come down to d1 so you can swing over to the c file. But the king here on c2 is protecting that. Now, a lot of players playing as black, in all honesty, would resign in this position because they recognize... There's nothing that they can do to stop the pawn pushing here to c8. But black actually does have a very creative move. While white still has a better move on top of that, black has a really interesting way to attack this. And that is to play rook to d4. And the reason that's such a good move is white may look at this and say, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and play pawn to c8, get my queen, and then black and play the move, rook to c4, check. Forking the queen here on c8. White is forced to take with the queen here on c4. And now you can see the queen is cutting off this square here on a2 for the king. This king can't come to b2 and b1 because the king here... And so this is stalemate. So while white has the upper hand in material by a long shot, black has forced white to put himself in a position where it's a tie game. So you don't want to do this. So the optimal move after uh, we see that rook to d4 is actually an under promotion. And that is to play the pawn to c8 and promote to a rook. Now you don't always see under promotions working out, but sometimes you always have to think about a few moves further down the path and see what your opponent can do. And black already knows that the pawn is gonna promote. And so they're usually thinking about how can I still get a draw out of this where white should be thinking about not how do I just immediately get the queen, but how can I win this game? What can go wrong so that I don't win this game? And if you go to a queen, they can force you by putting your queen here on c4 into a draw. Now, how does black continue if white has his rook here on c8? Because the threat from white is to play rook to a8. Just the normal rook to c4 is not going to work here because after the rook takes, this rook is not attacking that square here on a2. So the king can freely come to a2 where before it was attacked by the queen. So this is going to be an easy win for white because then they could just play rook to a4, and that's going to be checkmate. So if we come back, understanding the threat that white has of just coming over here to a8, the only real option that black has is to play rook to a4, trying to stop that threat. But then after king to b3, this pretty much puts a stop to all of the options that black has because now the threat of rook to c1 uh, is too much for black to deal with. Now, yes, black can just play king to b1 protecting the square here, but then you can see the rook here on a4 is going to fall and eventually with a king and a rook versus a king, white is going to win the game. There's no other option that black has uh, to try to hold on to this. This is going to be... Uh, checkmate. So this all started early on from this position, and then we start to see the best moves from white aren't always the most aggressive attacking lines of getting it here with pawn to c7 and then rook to d6. A lot of players 
Again, they want to attack, attack king to c5. Not necessarily the best way to continue in this position. Marching down this b file, making sure it's not in the same file as the pawn, and then delivering the decisive tactic is the way for white to win this. So hopefully that helped you as you have your own end games to think about where you should be going and how your opponent can actually respond and potentially take away a win that you have in your hands. If you enjoy this video, if you wouldn't mind, please hitting that like button and let me know in the comments below. Uh, lately, I've been doing a lot of uh, unique chess openings that I know you enjoy. I have a lot of in-game tactics as well as middle game strategies to go over, uh, but really just want to make content that you enjoy. So if you enjoyed this particular video and you want to see other videos like it, uh, please let me know and definitely hit that like button. But thank you guys so much for watching the video and supporting the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.